Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do an unboxing video. This is from, uh, uh, let me get it right again, uh, last time I was calling it a scene, but I believe I've been corrected saying it's ASEAN as, as plant exports from Thailand. So uh, this is the second time that I've ordered from them and uh, I really was impressed by the first time and uh, fingers crossed that this time it's just as good. Um, I heard mixed reviews of, of people having bad success, some people having good success, um, but all in all, so far, uh, in this experience, it has been a really, really good one. Uh, it was, I think it was prepared for shipment on the 4th of June, and it is now June 9th, and it is here. So, uh, five days in transit, coming from Thailand, that is amazing. <laughs> I couldn't walk there that fast. <laughs> so, anyway, hopefully the plants are, are looking pretty good inside. The box itself is in really, really good shape. And, uh, yeah, really excited to get this thing open. Uh, so, yeah, welcome to the grow room. Uh, I had to bring some plants in because, uh, bring some plants down because most of the grow room is, is now getting emptied out. Things are going outside. So, I was trying to find some things to, to put in the background. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, let's get to it. Let's open this up. Yeah, so the interesting thing about uh, SAN uh, plant export is that they utilize a, uh, a courier service called uh, Dragon Courier. And uh, they're a really interesting uh, uh, service where um, basically you piggyback on their uh, import uh, licenses uh, or import certificates, all that jazz. So you don't have to uh, apply for all that stuff yourself. Uh, so there's a little bit of added money in the shipping costs, but it go it comes from Thailand and straight kind of to your door. Uh, they're just the middleman, and it works fantastic so far for me. Uh, just to not have to worry about uh, dealing with the export uh, or import uh, documents and whatnot. Uh, you do still have to get the phytosanitary certificates, but it makes things a lot easier. That's within Canada. I'm not sure if uh, uh, Dragon Courier uh, deals with the U.S. as well but uh, I, all I know is Canada because that's where I live. Uh, so anyway, let's get down here. Let's open this up. I'm really excited. I can't remember what I ordered. I started to uh, create this list, I don't know, let's say January, February. I knew that it was too cold, so I started a, a shopping cart, and I went back in, and I added a couple of things that I saw at a garden center that I thought was really expensive, but I knew that, that uh, this place had them much cheaper, so I added those in as well. Uh, I know those few things, but the rest of the stuff that I added to my cart uh, back months previous, I kind of forget what I added. So, anyway, let's get to it. <laughs> okay, so let's get in here. Just going to use an X-Acto knife and watch your fingers. <laughs> so I almost lost my fingers uh, going around the perimeter of the box. If you watched my last unboxing video from them, uh, they package things really, really good. It's like Christmas. Everything is individually packaged, and uh, things look really good. All right, let's see here. Here we go. We got lots of packing in here. I've got all kinds of tissue paper. All the plants are are uh, individually wrapped up. I'm just going to move these off to the side. Let's just pull everything out, lay them out here on the table. I got a lot of things. <laughs> Whether that's a good or a bad thing, I don't know. I don't have space, but uh, let's see what happened. So many things. It was a really fun time ordering. <laughs> okay. I think, if I remember correctly, I ordered... 24 plants, but two of them were duplicates because I didn't know how to take the, the duplicate off of the uh, the order. So I said, that's all right. So that's everything. Got all kinds of tissue paper. And then looks like some silica packets, I believe, in here just to uh, maintain the humidity or to not have too much humidity going on. So let's put this off to the side and let's start opening these things up. So I do know that I ordered a bunch of Hoyas 
and I ordered uh, a bunch of um, Sansevieria or Dracaena now. They'll always be Sansevieria to me, and uh, so Hoya, uh, Dracaena, or Sansevieria, uh, a couple of Philodendrons, and I think I ordered a Syngodium as well, but let's go check this out. So what is this one? This one is a Hoya Lobi, Lobi Eye, dark form. They've got the labels right on there as well. Let me try to get that in focus. So their cuttings, these are rooted cuttings. And uh, last time I got them, I think I had uh, two, maybe three fatalities. But out of the amount that I ordered, uh, I thought that that was great success. And it was mostly me. I, they, they acclimated fine and they got some new growth, but I think I overwatered. So this one is a little low BI, uh, super nice. Uh, I can't wait to pot these things up. I might not pot them up today. Uh, they might get potted up tomorrow. Uh, I just got home from work, so. <laughs> uh, and then this one here is another Hoya. This one looks like it's Hoya Lacanosa. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, look at the tiny little leaves. Are you able to see the little leaf there? This one is Lacanosa Hoya uh, Silver Leaf. So this one is going to have a more silver uh, appearance to the leaf. So nice. Is it going to come in? <laughs> Let's try to get a little closer. So we got another Hoya. What's this one? This one's a Hoya Pachyclata. This is the one that I saw at the garden center and I wanted to get it, but it was $60 in the garden center and this place had them for, uh, for five. So uh, a really big uh, difference in price. So this one has a nice, beautiful, thick leaf. When I saw pictures of the Pachyclata online, uh, they kind of reminded me of a gigantic silver dollar vine. They're very succulent. Uh, they have a nice, thick stem. Everything about it is just so thick. Uh, so I thought it would be a really, really fun one to grow. So I'm very excited to give this a try. Uh, when I was at the garden center, uh, it really stood out to me. And I'm like, ooh, what's that? And then it was a Hoya. So. <laughs> Uh, so that got added to my wish list very, very quickly. Uh, very excited to see how that one grows. That one's the Pachyclata, like I said. What the heck is this one? This one here, let's open this up. It's a Philodendron. Oh, this one has a few icky leaves, but all in all, from its little transit chip, it is a, it's not in bad shape. There's a few bad leaves, but hopefully we can rehab it. Uh, and, but the majority of the leaves on here are looking pretty good. This one is a philodendron subhastatum, subhastatum. It has the red backside to the leaf. So this particular philodendron, from what I understand, it's a lower uh, light grower. Uh, it doesn't want any of the, uh, the full sun or, or uh, sorry, bright indirect. It wants more of a, a bright location, not a bright indirect, um, more on the lower side. They say that the, the leaves with the, uh, the, uh, the red back actually tolerate lower light a lot better than others. So super excited about this one. I'm still really learning about uh, philodendrons and I've been killing a lot of philodendrons lately, but uh, I really want to get the hang of it and I don't want to spend $200 on something that might not survive. So I think that this one was $20 US or $25 US, uh, so uh, it's, it's worth the gamble for me. So I'm going to be potting this up. I'm going to pot it up in some moss, some lightly packed moss that's just damp, and I'm going to put it in the, uh, the grow tent, and I'm going to give it lots of humidity and uh, try to let it grow out and, uh, and recuperate itself. But I'm okay. The plant itself is a really good size. All right, on to the next one. Oh, it's like Christmas. Uh, so this one here is a Sansevieria. Let's see what it looks like. They wrote the, the names on, on all of them here. Oh, he's so small. This one here is a Sansevieria Cleopatra. Maybe I'll, uh, well, Google it. I'll, I'll put the name down below. The uh, Cleopatra has really, really beautiful uh, leaf colorations. 
I have some uh, Sansevierias that look similar to Cleopatra, but are not Cleopatra, so I had to add one of these to my collection. Oh, it's such a pretty plant, even now. It's so small, it will get much bigger than this, uh, but I'm very, very okay with waiting. I don't, I don't have all the space right now, so growing into it, that sounds like a good plant to me. So that's a Sansevieria Cleopatra, putting them down here. Let me move this bench a little bit farther this way so that maybe you can see more. There we go. Now what do we got here? This one here, it's a Hoya. Oh, I like this one. This one is a type of shingling Hoya. This is Hoya imbricata. And uh, this one here has a nice, it's a really cool round leaf that if you don't give it a support, a, a, a board or a moss pole, these leaves will wrap around the stem and they're not really attractive, but if you give them a, either a tree or a, or a pole of some sort to, uh, to climb up, the, the leaves flatten against that uh, uh, surface and you get to really see the, the look of them. This one here has kind of a, a silver splash on it, uh, so it's just the, the marking on the leaf. It's really, really cool. I'll see if I can find a, uh, a photo uh, and from Google and uh, put it in the video here uh, so that you can see what it looks like as it's climbing up a tree. This has been on my wish list for at least a year, maybe two years, uh, when I started looking up Hoyas and I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever be able to find one. But uh, they have them and I think that they were, this, this particular variety was around five dollars. Most of the Hoyas that I got were around five dollars, maybe ten at the most. So nothing too expensive. And that's all U.S. pricing. So super excited about that. Everything here is packed up individually uh, in like a sphagnum moss. What is this one? This one here is a Hoya. I'm trying to break the tape with my knife as I also cut my fingers off. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. All right, so this one here, this one's going to be a fun one. Uh, this is a Hoya David Cumming Eye. David Cumming Eye. Uh, this one has a really interesting flower. Maybe I'll see if I can find the David Cumming Eye. Cumming Eye. I can't even say it. <laughs> flower and put it to the side. If I can remember correctly, it kind of has an orange hue to it. Uh, so it's a little bit different. And supposedly it's a really easy bloomer. And it looks, by the size of this rooted cutting, uh, it might be a fast grower as well by the amount of leaves on here. So uh, super excited to see how this one grows. I was trying to find more Hoya that have smaller leaves so that I can grow them together, not together in the same pot, but so they don't have to take up so much space. More like the um, the uh, Cardissii or the Bella or uh, the Matilde. I love the Matilde. Okay, so this one is a Sansevieria Kirkii Copper, I believe. Copper. So this one here doesn't seem to have any copper in it at the moment. Maybe it needs to be a sun stress. But the, uh, the Kirkii, it kind of resembles a um, elongated samurai, I guess. Uh, but this one is supposed to have more of a brownish tinge to it. Again, maybe when it gets... Uh, uh, a little bit of light stress. Let me see if I can also find a photo of this one. Hopefully I can find something that's worthwhile. Super excited about growing these sense of areas. What is this one? There we go. This one here has a bad leaf on it. So we'll see, we'll see. We got a nice new growth coming out here. But this one is a Hoya Elliptica Philippine. So the leaves are, are very, um, very limp. But let's hope that uh, it just needs a little bit of a drink and uh, maybe the roots just need to develop a little bit more. We'll baby this one. I'll put this one in a little bit of moss, I think, to, uh, to let it establish. And then I'll plant it into a nice uh, chunky mix. Uh, Hoyas tend to like um, quite a bit of bark in their, their mix. So uh, we'll try this out, do a little bit more research about the elliptica, and uh, see how it grows. And uh, yeah, if anybody has any suggestions on anything that they've seen in this unboxing, let me know if you have any, any care tips. 
because uh, uh, many of these things I have not grown before. Obviously Hoyas are Hoyas, but each Hoya seems to be a little bit different. So what is this one? Oh, this one's a Kirkii Silver. A Sansevieria Kirkii Silver. Look at the fun colors on this particular one. Oh, so cute. So they just, they're very similar. Cleopatra looks very similar to uh, the Kirkii. <laughs> uh, I should, uh, I should keep the, keep the Sansevieria uh, tags together because I will forget what they are. They all look the same. But the Cleopatra with the Cleopatra, and then the, um, then the Kirky Eye Silver with the Kirky Eye Silver. <laughs> I'll move him off to the side. I still have so many things to go through, there's not enough space on the table. What's the next one? This one is a Deshidia Ovada. I actually just recently bought a Nevada. This is a rooted cutting, or sorry, an actual plant. This one has some distress, maybe from too much moisture and shipping. But we'll see if we can't get this back to uh, to right. Maybe there was. Do you see? There's all kinds of yellowing in here. It's always the risk when you're when you're buying online for. Uh, for plants to uh, deteriorate. Some things don't ship as good as others. We've got all kinds of bad leaves here. I'm gonna keep the, um, the label together with this one. This one doesn't have any, any label on it. But I bought this one from my local garden center um, about a month ago and it wasn't looking so good. I think it was getting too much light. So I thought, oh, I'll get this one just in case. So um, I think I paid ten dollars for this rooted cutting, and I think I paid five dollars for this. So about the same price when you uh, uh, consider the difference in uh, in exchange. Uh, this was in U.S. dollars, and this was Canadian. I also had shipping attached to this, so they were equal in in their their value. So I'm super excited to grow both. See if we can't um, rehab this one into success. I'll actually probably end up, these ones that have uh, rotting stems here, I'll probably cut them back and I'll just root them along the, uh, the good stems. What is this one? This one is Scandapsis trubii. Oh, this one doesn't look so good. I've got one good leaf on this trubii. Scandapsis trubii. So again, you can't you can't win them all. I do have two of these. I think they were eight dollars each, so it was worth the gamble. And we'll see what the next one looks like. But hopefully the uh, the stem is still good, and we can bring it back to health. That's a good thing about many of these aeroids, these vines and whatnot. As long as the stem is good and doesn't have any rot, you should be able to bring them back. I love the leaf. It's it's uh, even even for being half dead. I love the texture of it. So this is the trubii. Let's move it off to the side. Like I said, always a gamble. You've got to be willing to uh, take a risk if you want to get these better prices. You know what I'm saying? This one here is do 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 sangii. This is a Hoya Sangii. For the most part, the Hoyas are shipping really, really well. Uh, I haven't heard too much about Sangii. I've heard it mentioned in some podcasts. I think on Fancy Plants podcast, they mentioned Sangii in their, their uh, Hoya episode. And uh, I'm excited to give it a try. It's another one with smaller leaves. So uh, again, I, I'm really looking forward to growing some of those. Next one here, another Hoya, oh my goodness. So this is a big flowering Hoya, Hoya Megalaster. So when I think of this one, I think of um, Onocoides, or I think of, um, what's the other one? McGilvrier, McGilvrier, I guess. 
So they're all very similar to me uh, in their flower. Their flowers are quite large. The leaves are very thick and and uh, and just succulent. So I'm excited to see how this one grows. Uh, I've got a bunch of, of types like these that have the larger flower. For whatever reason, I just I'm really drawn to the large the large flowers of Hoyas. I don't know if I'll ever get them to bloom because uh, sometimes when they have the larger flower, there's a little bit harder to, to have uh, bloom. You need a little bit better conditions, maybe hotter, uh, maybe more humid. But we'll give it a try. So that's Hoya Megalaster. We're getting there. We're getting there. So this one, because the Scandapsis trubii didn't do so well, I'm worried about this one. In my area, we had a heat wave, so maybe maybe it's just a, a heat wave situation. Oh, that's not so bad. This one here, I think I think right now it's um, uh, plus 30 degrees Celsius outside. Uh, so shipping in in those temperatures is is not that great. So this is Philodendron gigas or gigas. I'm excited to give this one a try. I've liked this one. It's very similar to the Melanocrysum and I need that in my collection as well. This is going to be also similar to the uh, the Mykins, which I have a hard time growing <laughs> for whatever reason, um, but I'm going to try growing it in a very airy mix uh, so I can water it often and uh, what I've been doing with the behind me, if you saw at the beginning of the video, I have um, a Raphida, Raphidophora tetrasperma and uh, I have it planted in just uh, cocoa husk and I I've only I only water it like once every three weeks uh, because the cocoa husk stays damp. So I just plunge my hand into the pot and see how the moisture is. And if it if it needs a drink, I give it a drink. But most of the time, it doesn't need it. So I'm on a learning curve with these sorts of things. Uh, and uh, let's give Gigas a try or Gigas. And super excited to uh, to try it out. And this one actually looks a lot better than the uh, the Scandapsis. <laughs> Thank goodness. Again, if you have any uh, uh, growing suggestions for these, let me know. I'm going to be putting them in the grow tent for a while uh, as they adjust. I want them to, uh, to have higher humidity as they produce some new roots. This one is another Hoya Sangii. <laughs> I can't believe I got two of these. Um, but anyway, I can't, I can't remember ordering two, but uh, I got two. Don't need to show you a close-up because we've already seen it, but here we go. <laughs> we'll do the close-up again anyway. What else do we got here? This is another Hoya, Hoya manipuensis. Manip Hopefully I'm saying that right. Let me uh, get the tag out. Well, this one doesn't look so great, but it doesn't look bad. Hoya... Yeah, Hoya manipuensis. <laughs> the leaves are very interesting. They kind of remind me of a carii leaf, but a lot smaller. So super, super cool. I can't wait to see how this one grows. Um, I need to get this potted up. It looks like the, uh, the leaves are desiccating just a little bit. I need to be very careful. I need to bring the moisture in slightly. I don't want to uh, drown it because if they're in some root stress, you add too much water and they'll rot. So maybe I'll just uh, take a mist bottle after uh, I take the, after I do this video, and I'll just give them a light misting. Bring their moisture level up a little at a time. What do we have here? This is Painted Lady. Oh, I forgot I got this one. Philodendron Painted Lady. This philodendron actually looks really, really nice. Look at the uh, the variegation on the Painted Lady. I believe that Painted Lady... Painted Lady has a, uh, uh, a stable variegation. It's more of just like a blotching of, uh, of various colors along the, the leaf, and it's quite, it's quite pretty. At first, I didn't know how I felt about it because they kind of, um, they're just, it's erratic. It kind of made me think that there was like a problem with the plant, but uh, it's grown on me. I, I keep looking at photos of them, and uh, they just, they're, they're really looking nice. And I believe that the variegation comes out uh, pretty strong in the beginning on the newer leaves. 
and then as they age, they they uh, they fade out a little bit. They go a little bit more green. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. I can't wait to see how this grows. We got a couple of yellowing leaves on here, but the stem itself looks really really good. I can't wait to pop this up into some uh, some moss and uh, give it a little bit of a, a drink. We got a new new shoot developing on there as well, or a new leaf. Can you see that? It just looks really good. It, it went through transit, not so bad. Might need to put this painted lady on his on her painted lady uh, paper paper. What is this one? Lacanosa. It's another Lacanosa. Hoya Lacanosa. Heart shaped leaf. So the other one was silver, and then this is a heart shaped leaf. It doesn't look very heart shaped right now, but the, the plant itself is very small. So we'll see. I think when I looked at this one, the leaf looked more like a courtesy eye, and uh, that really struck my fancy. Uh, so we'll give it a try. So we've got the Lacanosa. Where are we here? Right here. Silver. Silver leaf and the heart leaf. So we'll see. We'll see how they all they all go down. Uh, we're almost done. Two more. If you stayed here this long, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> all right. Let's see what's in this one. This one is um, Syngonium. That doesn't look so good. It's called Syngonium Pink Dream. So. As you can see, oh, it's not bad. It's just the pink in the leaf. <laughs> so it is a Syngonium. It could look better, but uh, I don't know whether it's going to come in here. There's all kinds of pink splashing all over the leaves. I have not grown Syngonium in a very long time. Uh, they have been a very, for lack of better words, a basic plant that you just overlook in the garden centers because they're everywhere and they're like $4.99 for a small pot and I see them in everybody's house and uh, it's something that never really interests me but then this whole Syngonium craze has been coming in and uh, there's there's a few that are really beautiful that I want to get uh, so I thought I'd try out the pink one and see if I can grow it uh, there's another one Syngonium Wendlandii I believe that is just beautiful and I love it I love the dark leaf with the white vein down the center uh, but this is a good starting point for me uh, supposedly Syngoniums are quite hardy uh, they are. Uh, they tolerate drying out. They tolerate uh, moisture conditions. So let's let's give this a try. I believe this is this one because of the pink and the the light variegation. Uh, I believe that this one is going to need a little bit more light than uh, the plain green uh, syngoniums. So very very excited to try this one out. Looks like I have two plants in this one, which is fantastic. Maybe I'll put them in different pots so that I can uh, maybe not kill one of them. <laughs> so this one is called Pink Splash. All right. And then this one here is the last one. And this one is Pink uh, Sansevieria Pinguicula. It is not a carnivorous plant. Hey. This one here, I think that they got their IDs wrong. So I think that this one is the Kirky Eye uh, Copper, <laughs> because, because that's more of a Kirky Eye. And then uh, this one here is the Pinguicula. So they got their, their labeling wrong. That's all right. Uh, the the Sansevieria Pinguicula has a really interesting habit of uh, producing uh, its rhizomes more like a stolen, like a spider plant. Uh, out of the soil surface, uh, above the soil, uh, the, the rhizome or stolen will come out and then it will produce a baby plant and then the baby plant will produce roots to go down into the soil itself. So it's a really interesting uh, plant, the way that it grows. So I can't wait. In, in 15 years, when this plant gets a little bit bigger um, <laughs> uh, and it's starting to do its thing, I can't wait to update you on, uh, on how it's growing and how interesting the pot looks with so many babies and all the prop roots and all that jazz. So that is everything. 
I think what had happened, I think I ordered two of the Manip Manipur Manipurensis, I can't say that, I don't know why. Um, I think I was supposed to get two of those, but instead of two of those, I got two of the Sangii. So we'll see, we'll see how they grow. I'm really excited to see how this one grows. Hopefully it doesn't uh, shrivel up and die on me. The leaves are quite, um, they're wrinkly, <laughs> but there's still life in the leaf. It, it's not, it's not soft by any means. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, unboxing. It was more than a little unboxing, it was a lot. Uh, and I'm super excited to get these things to grow. And I was supposed to get two of these guys. Maybe there's two um, wrapped up in together uh, of the, uh, the Trubii. So we'll see. Anyway, all in all, it was success. Uh, the, uh, the successes outweigh the failures, in my opinion. So uh, I would continue to order from, uh, from this uh, place again and again, as long as I have enough space. So anyway, show me what you're growing. I'd love to see what you're getting in, um, in your plant shipments if you're ordering plants online. Uh, I'd love to see what you're interested in. And uh, yeah, until next time, you guys, happy growing.